All right. Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to the Church of Infinite Spirit. It is a place where you can come to be inspired, be connected, and be transformed. And I am certainly looking forward to all three of those today. <laughs> oh, my name is uh, Reverend Margaret Johnson, just for those of you who might not know me. Um, I've been around for, for quite some time and I'm so happy to be leading the service today. Just a couple of things before we get started. Um, most of you all are very familiar with Zoom by now. Uh, but just know you can change the way that you see people on screen up on the upper right. There's a little gallery button if you want to see all the other people. Um, and you can mute and unmute yourself uh, in the lower left of the Zoom box. I'm going to have everybody muted today until we finish the kind of formal service if you could call it formal. It's really not. But uh, and then afterwards we'll have a little community time. Um, this is the first of the month service. This is a service that typically um, in former days <laughs> was held in person in Denver, Colorado. Um, but now we're doing all of our services online, which is really fantastic because we can have more people from more places, including myself in Santa Fe, uh, participate. Um, it is the mission of this church to inspire spiritual freedom by supporting people in knowing themselves as spiritual beings and knowing who they are as a spiritual being in relation to the energy that created or creates the universe, all one consciousness universe. And we support the amazing transformation that happens when we become aware of who we are as spiritual beings. This church service is non-traditional. It's non-dogmatic. It's an opportunity to come and take a break from the world. And we really hope to recapture kind of that essence of what church can be, a respite, a time of quiet, a time to be together as we each look for and experience our own truth, our own spiritual wisdom. And that's what this church is all about, is supporting that experience, that adventure, I would call it. It is always, always a take what works for you, let go of the rest environment. So I'm gonna be sharing today, please take what works and inspires and let go of anything that isn't helpful for you really do thank you for being with um, me today to take a break for the next half hour or so um, to, to become together, again, meditate, be a community, whether you're here live or on recording. So thanks so much for, for being here. So we start with a meditation as we always do, a way to come in, a way to take our attention off of what's going on in the world and there is so much going on in the world. So if you would like to participate, please take a big deep breath and close your eyes. Get comfortable wherever you are seated. This is gonna be a pretty short four-step meditation. But with your eyes closed, I first want you to take a big deep breath. Notice your body, this amazing vehicle with which you are here in this lifetime to travel, to experience. It's a pretty amazing creation. <laughs> and sometimes we're hard on our bodies. You could just notice and appreciate your body or its ability to move or see, hear, or taste. Great. Sometimes the body might respond to that gratitude. It might give you a little message back. This 
So the first step in this meditation is grounding. And I want you to notice your tailbone, yeah, the very base of your spine, you're sitting on it. It's also your first chakra. And using your imagination, I want you to grow a beam of colored light, any color, blue, green, purple. And let that beam of colored light begin to grow out of the tailbone. Using your imagination, let it grow through the chair, through the floor, into the foundation, through the foundation of the building that you're in, and into the earth itself. And let it tunnel with ease through all the layers of the earth until it gets to the very center of the earth. This beam of colored light, this grounding cord, is a way to center, a way to really come into your body. It's so easy to scatter in terms of our attention. Grounding helps us come into the body. And it also serves as a conduit to let go, to let go of energies, thoughts, experiences that we no longer need or that we just, that just don't work for us anymore. They might not even belong to us. So just notice, notice that grounding cord Notice if you're carrying energy from the world, about the world. Notice if you're carrying something that really doesn't belong to you. If so, you could just let it go. Let it go down that grounding cord, along with any stress, any fear, Great. The kind of cool thing about this grounding cord is that once you create it, it just continues to release energy. You don't have to know what's going down that grounding cord. All you need to know is it is letting go of anything that isn't in present time, that isn't yours, that isn't in your highest and most sacred good. Next, I want you to bring your attention into the very center of your head, behind your eyes, in between your ears. This is the sixth chakra, number six of the chakra system. And it's a place behind your head, behind your eyes rather, in the middle of your head. It's designed for you to be, to be there and see. See yourself, see the world with a backdrop of neutrality, even validation. It's a place that holds the promise of a different, and I would say larger spiritual perspective. Let yourself be there. And if there are thoughts, that's okay. It's totally okay. They can just come in and they can leave as easily as they came in. Kind of like a ticker tape. Let yourself be comfortable in that spot, in the middle of your head. Great. Next, I want you just to notice you have a bubble of energy around your body. It's called your aura. And it's about an arm's length out in all directions. So it's probably egg shape. This bubble of energy is so helpful to say hello to because at the edge of your bubble kind of ends your space. And everything within your bubble, within your aura, within your body, you can manage. You have the ability to change anything within your inner landscape. 
And what's on the outside of the bubble is not yours to change, control, or manage as much as we might want to, as much as we might want to change what's happening on the outside. It isn't our place to do so. We have no power there. However, we have a lot of power within. And as we change the energies, the vibrations within our inner landscape, we change our reality. So notice your bubble. Paint your bubble a color, maybe a different color than your grounding cord. Today, mine is a really deep pink. By painting the outside of our bubble, we can delineate what belongs to us and what doesn't. And this is really helpful, especially if we've been kind of taken, taking in the world into our inner landscape, which is pretty easy to do recently. Great. One last step. Go ahead above your head and use your imagination to create a big gold sun. Huge, maybe twice as big as you originally created it. And on the outside of that gold sun, I want you to write the word amusement. Amusement. So that the energies in that gold sun are now vibrating the quality of amusement. Notice that big sun getting so huge and heavy above your head, it's about to pop. But before it does, you pop it and sit under the shower of energy coming into your head, your neck, your arms. Let it fill your torso, your hips, legs, all the way to your toes. And then let that energy just spill out into your aura, the energy of amusement. It is pretty easy lately to uh, be serious. And serious energy isn't a helpful way to transform or change. When we're serious, kind of the energies get really heavy. They're harder to move. But when we bring in the vibration of amusement, a lightness, we're not laughing at ourselves and we're not laughing at, at the world. We're just bringing in a touch of amusement. Just like if you're baking, you put in a touch of vanilla, adds, adds a flavor. And this touch of amusement can really, really support us in shifting and changing our inner landscape. Great job. Just notice how you are experiencing yourself, perhaps a little differently than we, when we first started. And if you'd like, you can just stay here, eyes closed in this meditation space, or if you prefer, you can open your eyes and stretch. Great. Well, here we are. It is Labor Day weekend, and I, for one, have just no idea where the summer went. I don't know if you feel the same way. The traditional touchstones of the seasons seem to have gone missing. And there are moments when it seems that we're in some kind of time warp. Thank goodness for the changing fruits and vegetables in the grocery store to keep me somewhat aligned with time. Labor Day is intended to be a holiday marking a day of rest and a celebration of workers, a time out, a break, and it also marks the unofficial end of summer. A day of rest, doesn't that sound inviting? No news of COVID, no political or election headlines, 
No strange weather to ponder, no bills to pay, no uncertainty or fear of the future. I don't know about you, but I and a lot of people I've been working with recently really could use a break because for many, the past summer months have felt more like a spiritual winter. I've spoken with and worked with a lot of people experiencing endings, loss, and invitations to let go of what is complete. Loved ones passing, relationships ending, employment challenges, financial losses, just to name a few. And it seems that 2020 is unfolding to be a year of monumental change. Perhaps we could even say laborious change. At times it feels like a marathon that just keeps unfolding. A marathon of ever-changing landscape as we leave the familiar behind and encounter the unknown. My question is, does this type of marathon count as physical exercise? Because I've really had a hard time getting into any kind of routine uh, for my body in this way. So much of what we knew as ordinary or normal has fallen away, reminding us that all things come to an end or complete. It's a planet of cycles, and it's not just a planet of cycles, it's a reality of cycles. And 2020 has done a great job of reminding us of the inherent cyclical nature of the planet and of reality. Nothing lasts forever. No situation, no possession, no relationship. And big picture, that's good because forever is a long, long time. And if something did last forever, you as a soul would get very, very bored. You'd get done, complete, and ready for something new. Okay, universe, I don't think anyone is bored at the moment. When something is done, it's done. And if we let go without judgment, the wisdom of the experience is integrated into the next cycle of reality. And if we let go with a sense of wrongness, blame, or resistance, then those vibrations are part of the template for our next experience. How we start something largely dictates how we will experience it. This applies to the cycles of reality that we create here in this physical lifetime. And it also applies to the cycle of incarnation. Pretty interesting. That which we judge about ourselves, or hold against ourselves in a sense of wrongness, seeds the template for the next incarnation. However, if we let go of that sense of wrongness or blame, and we embrace and own and integrate, then those experiences become wisdom in the soul. The key to allowing the new is letting go of the old without it being wrong. And that can be hard. And what also can be sometimes even harder is being in that weird place in between. Almost always between the letting go and the next step, there's that in-between place, the winter, or as Lauren, founder of this church, likes to say, the hallway. Something is gone, but we don't yet know what's next. Brene Brown, you might have heard of her. She's a research professor who studies courage, shame, and vulnerability. She calls it the day two, the messy middle. She had been for years giving these three-day seminars where people would come for intensives 
And the first day people would show up all excited. They got their pencils, they got their spiral notebooks, they're ready to go. Day two was where it got really messy. Sometimes it got really hard to actually show up for those, those uh, seminars, for those lectures. The messy middle. We have left the familiar room we're in. We've had to let it go. And now we're in the hallway. But often we try to hold on to the old while we're still in the hallway. This could be very, very uncomfortable. It's pretty impossible to stretch that far. You're just trying to hold on to the door of the old as you're in the hallway, the in-between. The hallway sometimes can generally be pretty dark. It doesn't feel like anything's happening. You don't know where you're gonna end up. But just like under the snow in winter, new creation is percolating and forming. Sometimes in the hallway, it feels like there are marbles on the floor, maybe thorns on the wall, but those of our those are of our own creation. The pain of the hallway is a product of our own resistance to that very natural part of the cycle of reality. What can help so much when we're in the hallway is remembering our spiritual nature by connecting in with that light, the truth of who we really are it changes the experience of the hallway. Just like that spiritual connection changes every experience when we invite it in. With spiritual vision or looking through the perspective of the incarnated soul, the, high, the hallway is a place we've all been before and will be again. It's a place to regroup to practice trust, to remember that it's not wrong to be there, to remember that all is well in the universe. In the hallway, we can create any new door if we aren't coming from a place of being wrong for where we are. If we're not, if we're not coming from a place of self-judgment or invalidation, It is easy to resist the hallway because, you know, we like to do and know. We're all doers and knowers. I like to do and I like to know. I like to know what's next, what's coming. But by its very nature, the hallway involves neither doing or knowing. It seems 2020 is a year that's all about the hallway. The hallway possibly for each of us as individuals and perhaps the hallway of the collective, our society. The messy middle between what has been and what will be. And as we stumble around in the dark, not knowing yet what new door we will create, it is important to remember that we can activate a light in our hallway with our sense of self as a spiritual being and our connection to source, universe, God. If you find yourself in the hallway, or when you do, I invite you to notice your own light. Maybe a little crown chakra headlamp. <laughs> Headlamps like you use in camping. And notice, maybe there's some skylights allowing the light of source to envelop you. These lights, your light as a spiritual being, as well as the light of the universe are always shining, always bright. And they help to remind us of who we are and that nothing is inherently wrong. Maybe by being in the hallway and not resisting this part of the cycle, we have an opportunity to know even more the truth of who we really are. 
that infinite being of light. Then we can give ourselves a break from our labors. One way to activate and experience your light is through meditation. So join me again by closing your eyes. Come back into that sixth chakra, center of head. Notice you have your aura bubble painted a color. And you're grounded, releasing any energy that isn't helpful, doesn't belong to you. And from that sixth chakra, I want you to notice just with your intention that you can move from any stance of wrongness that you might be holding. You can just move from wrong to is. It is what it is. What's happening in our world is happening in our world. What's happening in your landscape is happening in your landscape. I invite you to let go of any energy that says it's wrong, that blames you or blame someone else. Any energy of judgment, that energy can just flow down your grounding cord. And with intention, you can move from wrong to is. Notice if you are in a hallway, your hallway of this cycle. Perhaps notice the light in the hallway that comes from you as a spiritual being, this infinite being of light that has been through so many cycles so many lifetimes, so many iterations and changes. Notice, if you want, the skylights in your hallway that connect you to source. And if there's anything that you are hanging on from what has been, what was, just let that go. What was is no longer, and that's been always true, COVID or no COVID. Notice you, a soul on a journey, having an experience in a pretty amazing lifetime. Lots happening in our world. A lot of opportunity for growth and change for each of us and as a collective. What will the new door be? What room will it open? What will we experience in that new place? That's all unknown at this time. However, we can be where we are in the hallway, armed with a little amusement, maybe a little grace, and say yes to what can be, what will unfold in your highest and most sacred good. And just notice in this hallway that rest is always available. A respite from all the labors through the light, through the skylight.
One last step. Go ahead and create a big gold sun above your head. Write the word validation on the outside of that sun. And when you're ready and that gold sun's huge and heavy above your head, pop it and fill in with the vibration of validation. Validating you as a soul. Your willingness to be here in the body, in this experience of reality, in this messy middle. Notice what it's like to bring in more validation into your inner landscape. You can use these gold suns anytime you want to bring in peace, love, validation, joy. Great job. All right, and when you're ready, you can open your eyes and stretch. So good to ground together, isn't it? <laughs> so great. So when we are in uh, our quote unquote live services in Denver, now would be the time that we would pass the baskets for the offertory. So I'll just pass those baskets telepathically. We so appreciate um, donations. They really help us support these online services that we do as well as everything we do teachings at the Interconnection Institute. So always we ask you to give what feels good to you. And in that act of giving, you activate the opportunity to receive. So on our website, there is a donation button at the bottom of our sanctuary page and our website is interconnection.org. So if you feel as if you'd like to contribute, we thank you very much for that. And uh, you can find that donation button on the website. As we're passing the baskets, when we are in a kind of live church, we always tell a joke, which um, I've got one today. Over time, I think about all the places I've visited and people I've lost along the way. It really does make me think, maybe I shouldn't have been a tour guide. Anyway, <laughs> that brought amusement to me. I hope it brought amusement to you. <laughs> Couple of announcements. So Lauren's teaching a four week class on intention and manifestation. And I will just say, if you are like me in the hallway, it is a great idea to really refine and remember those tools around how to set intention to create what you want, how to create the door that you want to go through into the next room, the next steps. So it's a really timely class. Um, check out the details. It's on our website under the classes tab. Um, and if you sign up by Friday, you would get a discounted rate. That class does start September 15th and it's four weeks. Also, we have our free meditation for living class. If you haven't checked that out, uh, please do as well as a lot of free guided meditations. I've found these really helpful lately. Sometimes it's really nice just to have a guided meditation. So um, check out our virtual classroom. Uh, you can get there on our website. There's a little tab on the upper right hand corner that says vir virtual classroom and feel free to use all of those free resources, including also um, all of the recordings of most of our online services are on our YouTube channel, which is Interconnection Institute. So a lot, a lot of resources to help light your way in the hallway. All right, well, thank you. Thank you so much for spending your time and attention here with me this afternoon on this Labor Day weekend. Uh, these are incredible valuable things that you have that you're sharing with. I also want to thank Lauren Skye who 
inspired a lot of this talk today with Ms. Bay on the place. So thank you, Lauren. Service on September 18th at noon. I'll be leading the way with that one. So I will uh, say goodbye for now. We'll stay on. Those of us who want to have a little talking time, but we'll say goodbye for the recording. Be well and uh, be kind 